Hey guys, in honor of the White House's National Makers Week, I welcome you to the first episode of my new series, Sawdust Everywhere. As you can see, there's already sawdust everywhere. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I built my first workbench. I've had this solid door sitting in my parents' garage for maybe three years now. I saved it from being thrown into a dumpster after a film shoot with the intention of using it as the surface for either a desk or a workbench. So in this series, I plan to document some DIY projects I've been wanting to do and to share my learning experience along the way. I don't own a table saw, so to get a long straight cut, I'm using this one inch by four inch beam as a straight edge guide for my corded circular saw. I clamped it down using a Cardellini clamp and a C clamp I borrowed from my roommate who also helped me decide on the name for this show. The door itself is propped up on apple boxes, all of these tools are supposed to be used for film, TV, or stage lighting. The evening prior, I did a test cut trimming off about four inches from one side of the door. This morning, I trimmed it down to its final dimensions of 30 inches deep. The saw I'm using is an old Black & Decker corded circular saw. It has to be close to 20 years old. The blade has never been replaced, so it was really dull, and it took quite a while to get through this cut. As you can see, the 1x4 beam is helping to keep the saw aligned and making sure I don't cut any deeper than my measurements. The width of a standard door is approximately 32 inches, so this is why I chose the 30 inch depth in case I ever were to move or needed to transport this workbench for any reason. I took a trip to Home Depot and picked up two Douglas fir 4x4 beams at 10 foot long. These will become the four main legs of the workbench. I also bought eight 2x4 beams at 8 foot long, which will make up the frame of the workbench. The 2x4 beams that I got were white wood. They were the cheaper option compared to the Douglas fir beams, which were either warped, chipped, or had too many knots. I also picked up some 3 inch screws for the frame, 2 and a half inch screws to attach the surface to the frame, and 4 6 inch wheels so my workbench is mobile. Here's a rough design of the frame that I sketched up. Each 4x4 leg was cut to be 32 inches, so when the wheels are attached, the height of the workbench is approximately 40 inches. I'm about 5 foot 10, so this was a comfortable height for me either standing or sitting on a bar stool. Here I'm using this right angle rafter square clamped to the beam to make sure my cuts are straight. While cutting these pieces, my dad's 20 year old saw decided to finally call it quits so I had to make a second trip to Home Depot and buy a new saw. Um, I did a separate unboxing video for the saw but then my microphone ended up running out of battery so I guess I'll just do a quick little overview here. I bought myself a Ryobi, Ryobi One Plus circular saw. Um, I know this is a lower end model but it had decent ratings for the price. I also chose the saw because I already have the batteries from my Ryobi sander, but uh, maybe down the line I'll pick up a higher end model, but for the time being this will do the job just fine. So now with the new saw and a sharp blade I got back to work. The short support beams were originally cut at 26 inches because I wanted a 4 inch deep lip on the front to allow for any clamping. I forgot to account for the thickness of the long support beams spanning the length of the table so I recut these short pieces down to 23 inches. The reason for that is 2x4 beams are actually about 1.5 inches thick because when they're first cut at the lumber mill they're roughly 2 inches by 4 inches but they're finished and sold at one and a half by three and a half inches after the drying and treating process. Each side will have a two inch lip, so the long beams were measured and cut to be 74 inches. The back doesn't have a lip because it's the back. Once I finished cutting all of the beams, it was time to assemble the frame. I used my Raptor Square once again to align all of the pieces. I drilled pilot holes and countersunk each hole to keep the screw heads flush and to help prevent any wood splitting. I used the 3 inch wood screws to attach the support beams to the legs. I'm using my Milwaukee power drill slash impact driver combo that my, uh, my brother won in a raffle. The impact driver got these screws in super quick. I probably would have killed the batteries using only the driver. 
On the bottom, I had one of the longer beams attached on the inside to allow a little bit of leg room when sitting at the bench. I flipped the frame upside down to attach the wheels using one and a half inch wood screws. With the wheels attached, the frame was complete. And here I am testing the strength of the frame with some dips. My friend Ramil helped me flip the bench onto the door where I traced around the frame to give me a rough guide on where I needed to drill the pilot holes to attach the frame to the surface. We flipped over the door onto the frame so I can countersink the holes and I drilled in two and a half inch wood screws to attach the two pieces together and finish my workbench. This is me standing on my newly finished workbench and this is my friend Will who stopped by to help me test the durability of my project. So as you can see, it can support at least two humans. Thanks for watching my first episode of Sawdust Everywhere. I plan to make more videos on other hobbies I want to try or revisit. If you like this video and think I should make more, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more random stuff here and there, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the occasional puppy photo, follow me on Instagram. And also feel free to leave a comment below um, if you have any questions or if you have any tips and tricks that I might be able to utilize. Thanks guys and see you on the next one.